All right. Good morning, everybody. My name's uh, Justin Stofan. I work at uh, Garner Products. I'm currently in sales and uh, uh, was asked to do this uh, SVMI presentation. Oops. So starting off, uh, Sacramento Valley Manufacturing Initiative. Uh, SVMI is organized by and for Sacramento's manufacturers. We are committed to working with educators to proactively, proactively develop vocational, educational, and workforce initiatives and programs to involve students in the manufacturing world. Our efforts will ensure that the Sacramento area is viewed as a region of manufacturing excellence with a globally competitive manufacturing. So we got a couple, uh, I believe four classes in here today. Um, wonderful to have you, have you all here today and thank you very much for coming. So the goal of this event is to go over manufacturing. Uh, it's really what is manufacturing? Uh, what are the opportunities? What are the local manufacturers doing? Uh, and how can you be a part of it? And so to introduce our company and how we are involved with local manufacturing. Uh, we manufacture hard drive degaussers and destroyers. Um, and we, which is basically data elimination equipment. Uh, so we're end of life for all your computer needs, uh, cell phones, hard drives, anything really like that. Um, we serve large data centers such as Oracle and Amazon uh, and large corporations such as Microsoft, HP, and Apple. Um, we do large branches of the government. So we send equipment worldwide overseas to the Army, the Navy, and uh, our equipment is also evaluated by the NSA. So we have top secret uh, classification uh, levels. So our equipment can go in those uh, restricted areas and be able to destroy all their data. Um, how do we make it? Our equipment is made in-house with help from our machine shop, production team, and engineering department. So all three of those uh, de uh, departments, they work together to be able to make the best product uh, that we can. Some of the equipment we make is this picture, this uh, unit that's pictured down here below. This is a hard drive degausser. This actually creates a magnetic field that can that is used to demagnetize magnetic devices. So a couple of pictures I have up here is this credit card. Uh, this credit card, uh, as you can see, is uh, we, we have a, we have a magnetic fluid. It's called ferrofluid uh, that we put over the magnetic strip on the credit card. And that ex, uh, exposes something sort of like a barcode, a uh, kind of like a barcode, which is a magnetic striping on there. And so that is held on with a magnetic field. And when you put that through our degausser, the degausser gets rid of the magnetic field. So if you've heard the, uh, if, if you've gone to a hotel and the, and, the, and the reception has told you not to put your hotel room key next to your cell phone because it can demagnetize it. That's exactly what we make, but on a large, much larger scale. And so we do that with computer hard drives. And so on the image here on the left, you can actually see a piece of a hard drive platter. It's actually gone through a shredder. So that's why it's all uh, jumbled up down there and uh, looks pr pretty mangled. Um, it's actually under a microscope as well. So when you're looking at it under a microscope with the same magnetic fluid that we put on the credit card, we put that on the hard drive. And that is showing all the information that is on the hard drive. So everything in between the in between the, the lines here, that's all data. And that is what's being shown right there on this little piece of hard drive. And so when I say that we make this de uh, degausser on a much larger scale than just doing a credit card, um, this can remove all the data that is on a hard drive. And uh, it's pretty pretty impressive to do. It takes about seven seconds and it's safe to be around. So you're not like you're going to an MRI machine or anything like that. It's uh, very small uh, exposure with a magnetic field. So it's very, very cool. Um, we also make physical destroyers. So this is one of our hard drive crushers. This crusher puts out about 20,000 pounds of force. So it's about the size of a computer CPU. This is all manufactured in-house in our warehouse here in Roseville, California. Um, we also have this attachment in here. This is made out of four pieces of steel and one piece of aluminum. This is to destroy solid state media. Um, this is th this device here is, is made to go inside of this PD5, which puts out all that force and it's able to be used hundreds of thousands of times without um, being without without deteriorating under the immense force that the PD5 puts out. 
And just to show you what the what our crusher does, we have a picture of a hard drive over here on the left. So the hard drive on the right is just a standard computer hard drive. And the drive on the left is after it goes through our PD5 crusher. And so you can see what it does. It basically bends the hard drive up into like a taco-like uh, shape. And from there, basically good luck getting the data off of your hard drive. So that's kind of what we do here at Garner and uh, uh, what we make and some of the products that we offer. Um, my background personally, um, I am from Folsom, California. Uh, I went to Folsom High School and Sierra College. Uh, did I know I wanted to work in manufacturing? Uh, at first, not really. I kind of have a kind of a story here that I'm going to share with you guys, um, kind of showing what I've done to get to the position I'm in, in my sales position. Um, I started out um, as a bicycle mechanic out of, out of high school. I, my passion is cars and uh, basically anything with a motor in it. That's my that's my hobby. Um, I started out at the bicycle shop. Then I uh, was going there, working there while I was in high school. I then started going to Sierra College and I was looking for a different job. Uh, I was um, basically not old enough at the time to go into a manufacturing environment because I was under 18. Uh, it, and you can't work in a manufacturing environment depending on the company's insurance and other reasons. So um, when I became 18, then I started working for our family business. So I'm third generation in Garner products, by the way. Um, so family business. Um, and I started there just kind of sweeping the floors and doing anything I could kind of after hours um, just to kind of help out where I could. And that was when I started in our production. I was in the production and slightly helping out in our small CNC department. At the time, we had two CNC machines and one operator. Um, when I started doing that, I was just helping out for about an hour or two at the end of the day while building our products on our production line. And at the time, everything was in one uh, one big build or one building and uh, kind of went from there. So after about a year of doing that uh, and still going to school, I, I was going to school full time and doing this job, um, doing this after school, um, we uh, made our machine shop larger. Uh, we added a water jet, which is what I'm standing next to in this picture. And so what this water jet does is this water jet actually cuts through material with a really small stream of water at very high pressure at about 60,000 PSI, which is very strong. And what it does is you can cut out what, what I'm making here is actually, this is quite recently, this is for the COVID, I was making the PPE uh, face shields for our uh, uh, medical personnel, for people in hospitals, and we donated those to hospitals. And so I started out running the water jet and I had a lot of fun doing that. And I really wanted to stick around in the machine environment because I could see what I was able to build. And so from there, we expanded our shop. We went from three machines to six machines. Um, and so we added on a couple more CNCs. And then I was a CNC operator there um, when there was an opening because we were able to expand the shop and I was able to move up with that shop. So I was, I was fortunate for that. And doing that, uh, we had to start buying more material, more tooling or more tooling, stuff like that. And so I was able to also get in and see how we were purchasing. So from there, I was able to start as basically a uh, on our production line, then went to the machine shop. And now I was in purchasing. So I was purchasing the material for the shop. I was uh, ordering the tooling and basically planning out the jobs that were going to go from the office what our sales team needed and give that to the shop so that we could make the product and have our production line then build that. Um, so I did that for uh, actually I'm, I'm still doing that. So I'm doing that kind of as a as, as a to help them out. So about two years after I was in, in the purchasing and still running machines. So that was really fun because I wanted to make sure I was still running those machines because I really enjoyed that. Um, I was in the purchasing department. Um, and then there was a uh, position that opened up in tech support. So one of our tech support representatives, they actually were, were moving on. So they were leaving the company. So that was able, I was able to fill that position. So I went from our purchasing to tech support and tech support. It was really cool. I was able to uh, work with people, talk to people on the phone that's actually using our product. And it was really cool seeing how the product that I helped make I was able to help them talk them through if it was a simple fix, if, it, if for some reason 
uh, needed to come back for repair, anything like that, I was able to actually talk with them. And so that was really rewarding. And then from that, about two years later, after I was in tech support, uh, there was an opening in sales. And so that's where I am today. I'm in sales right now and uh, really enjoy it. So now I'm dealing with our customers, dealing with our dealers who are international all over the world to sell our product that I help make. And it's really rewarding being able to see all of that and how I can, uh, if, if the customer has a question, how's this going to work? I can tell them exactly how it was made because I was a part of that. And I have the experience to where I could be, talk them through on the phone, say, hey, check this before um, you send the unit back to us for any sort of repair. And so that was really cool. And so after being in sales for about two and a half, three years, I wanted to get back, uh, re refresh my machining ability. And so that's when SVMI actually had a program. It was called their uh, Machinist Pre-Apprentice Program. And so that was for if anybody was really wanting to uh, uh, become a machinist or get a job in that field, uh, if, they're, if they're in college or anything like that, they could take this program, work with the companies in SVMI, and they could kind of see what their what their skill levels were, and if the people would um, the companies would like to hire them from this uh, from this program and take them on for their actual job, and so that that was really cool um, to be a part of and be able to see how that worked, and I, I learned a lot from that class and from uh, from the experience. It was really nice and met a lot of people in there who uh, make a lot of cool things that are a part of this SVMI group. So um, that's kind of my background and. Uh, kind of how I got started. Um, another really cool thing to uh, talk about is also how I can use my skills that I've learned from this machining, from doing um, these tasks that I've done from working with Garner, um, how I can use that in the real world outside of work. And so I have some pictures here, um, kind of from my personal life and from some stuff that I've done inside and outside of our company. So if you look on the top left here, this is, I'm into, like I said, I'm into off-roading. Um, this is my off-road vehicle. I built a lot of this car um, from, from the ground up. Um, when it comes into this, you need to figure out how suspension works. You need to be able to learn how to weld. Um, basically, just kind of know your way around the car. Um, to jump on the right side of the, of the screen over here, uh, I have some, uh, some rock sliders that I made. I made these myself in-house by using uh, making these gussets here on the water jet. Um, I welded everything together, bent the tube over at a friend's house. It's, it's really cool to be able to see what you can do, or what, what you can do outside of work and uh, apply it to what your interests are. And so um, I have a picture here of a friend. Um, being, so part of the challenge of off-roading is when you go on these trails, there's no help. You're up in the mountains, there's no help there. And so my friend, he broke his car. Um, him and his dad were, were out on a trail and they called me to help bring tools so that we could be able to fix it and get it home hopefully. And it was really rewarding to be able to go up in the mountains, help him be able to fix that car and drive and drive it home. I wouldn't know that from know how to do this if I wasn't in the position I am. A um, couple of the other pictures here that I have uh, in the bottom left-hand corner is this is an actual picture from when I was on a tech support call about three or four years ago. And I went to a customer site, um, very cool, because you get to, again, you get to interact with the customer, um, show them the product that you help make and help them fix it with, with their issue. And so we're sitting down here diagnosing the issue. Um, it actually, in this case, it actually didn't end up being an issue with our with the power to the customer's building. And so it was kind of a long story there, but um, cool thing is that, that our product wasn't having an issue and that the customer is very happy regardless that we came out to help them work on their equipment. Um, a picture here is of our physical crusher. Like I said, that unit puts out 20,000 pounds of force. And everything that you see in this picture was made in-house, uh, everything other than this motor actually right here, everything was made in-house in our facility in Roseville. So it's really cool because we're able to make these parts from scratch. We're able to make our own wiring harnesses and we have the production team who can assemble everything in-house. 
it, it, it's really rewarding to be able to see these parts come out, look nice and shiny. This unit is a couple years old, and these parts that we've made, they still are very, they, they look so good. And it's just really rewarding to be able to see that when they come back with the mirror like finishes on the aluminum. Uh, we have some brass in there, so you get to deal with all these different materials, and it's really fun. Uh, and so, like I was already talking about, my job, uh, manufacturers are growing. Uh, they offer interesting work and provide rewarding careers. We want to hire local students like you to be part of our team and to do exciting, well-paid producing products, uh, work producing products that make the world a better place. So based uh, from building up on my, my past, from, 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 my, from my prior job, uh, from my prior experiences, this picture is actually taken with a group of, uh, that, that group that came in and they wanted to see our business to see what we've done. This is actually for the President's E Award that we received. And uh, President's E, -E Award is what we've done with exporting product outside of the US. So we sell X amount of product that goes outside the US. It's really cool to be able to see how these people um, who are not in the US, they're in India, Europe, wherever they might be, like the product that we make. So I was a part of making that product that they are using all over the world. And it's just really cool to be able to see that. So teamwork is a big part of work. <laughs> so how do you work with others to organ organize physically and on a uh, organizationally, physically and on a scheduled basis planned to conduct and complete your work? In sales, now that I'm at the com complete opposite end of the spectrum from when I started on the production line, um, the sales team, I have to be able to work with our engineering department, our machine shop, our production line, our people who are um, helping on our special pro uh, special projects and in our graphic design department. It's, we all work together to be able to make our product. Um, like in the picture here, um, this red cart just looks like a red cart with our equipment on top. A lot of work goes into that. We, we work with the engineers. We wanna be able to say, hey, I wanna put this, uh, our, one of our, both of our units here on top of the cart and be able to strap them down securely. So we work with the engineers, they draw up their designs, and then the designs then go over to our machine shop and they make it, and they make it work. It's really cool. And then from the machine shop, then those parts go over to our production team and they assemble it. And then next thing you know, we have a complete product here. And it's just really cool to be able to see that and how everyone just kind of meshes together and just, just works uh, really fluidly. And so it's, it's, it's really, really good to be able to see that. Um, some of the equipment we use in the shop, some of the CNCs that we have. Um, what have I had to learn about the product that I make, the processes that I'm responsible for, and the uh, personal protective equipment and safety. Always when you're in the shop, make sure you're wearing the safety glasses, you have slip resistant shoes, because when you're around CNC machines, uh, there can't be oil or coolant, or anything like that that might leak or drip on the ground and become a little slippery. Um, really, it, it's, it's, all, um, yeah, it's, all, it's all about safety. And so I used to wear ear protection as well, just to make sure if there's any, any machines that are going around when you're pulling out your parts, uh, when you have the high pressure air, just make sure it it's, can be piercing. So just make sure that you're using your personal protective equipment. Um, some of the equipment that I have pictured here is this is our CNC router. And so this unit is um, actually brand new. Uh, so another piece of equipment that I got to learn how to use and operate that we actually just got a couple months ago. Um, and we use this to make foam, so foam for our cases and uh, other other equipment like that. And so it's really cool to be able to um, make this foam. So when the customer opens up the box, they're going to see this product that's neatly packaged inside this cardboard box with this really cool foam cutout that is molded around the around the equipment. And it's really cool to know that they'll they'll probably throw it away or whatever. But we made that; it arrives at the customer undamaged, and uh, it's just re really neat to be able to know that. Everything that we make serves a purpose. Um, a picture that I have listed down below here. This is uh, some uh, some of the parts that we make uh, in still in the machine that actually are a part of uh, the PD5. So it's just cool to be able to show the parts that we're still making, how they look great coming out of the machine, even with a little bit of coolant on them. That's all right. Um, but yeah, it. It's just really cool to be able to see the parts that we make. Um, we have a horizontal bandsaw, so you get a, a piece of 20-foot uh, 
a piece of steel that's about 20 feet long and you can go ahead and program on the machine say i want this machine to cut 20 pieces of steel so the saw will automatically feed the equipment or sorry feed the steel coming through the saw stop clamp it cut and then continue to push it so you can basically hit start and walk away from it and when you come back you'll have your 20 pieces of steel that you wanted to cut and then from there you take your steel and go into your go to your cnc machine so it's just really cool to be able to know how to use all the equipment uh, when, when you're walking around the shop and uh, if you go into other people's shops you can say hey i know how to run that it's just really rewarding to be able to have that knowledge so again so some of some of the products we make uh, when you work for a manufacturer you can physically see and touch the end product that you help make which is immensely satisfying and it really is um, what we have here is uh, some of our top plates for our PD5 destroyer here. And so uh, we may, again, we make everything that's in that, uh, that's on that picture. Uh, we make these nice top plates. We make these plastic pulley, uh, these, these belt guides and the pulley wheels that are in the center of it. So it, it's just really cool. Again, from when I started, we were making these pulleys in a very in, in, inefficient way. Uh, which was on the on the water jet. Um, it took hours to be able to uh, cut out one of these pulleys. And now we've through through redesign, working with the engineering department, we've been able to where it went from almost an hour for, for uh, to make a pulley on the water jet, we can make that now in about 15 minutes inside of a CNC. And so inside of a CNC machine. And it's just really cool to be able to see how that has been able to progress and uh, mold into something that's that's much quicker and the part looks even better than it did back then and so it's just just really cool to be able to see that um the plastic parts are they are machined from a sheet of plastic so it starts off as a four by four sheet of uh, eighth inch pvc and so we cut out the pulley guides uh, as a circle on the water jet and then from there, we go and take them into our CNC mill and we put the chamfer on it, drill out, drill out the holes, put the, uh, and kind of do all the finishing on there, engrave the part number and stuff like that. Um, for the actual pulleys uh, themselves, those are made out of aluminum. And so they were made out of a block of aluminum that was about an inch and a half, uh, that was about an inch and a half tall uh, by about 48 inches and it was about 20 inches. So it was, it was a big chunk of aluminum that we had to throw up there. And, um, kind of go from there and it took a while to be able to get that get that out so now that same chunk of aluminum that we put on the water jet we put inside of our self-feeding bandsaw and so from there it um just gonna pull the chat up here so i can see on my other screen um and so from there we put that same chunk of aluminum that we put on the water jet on our bandsaw and so we cut it into about four inch or i'm sorry about three inch chunks so it's about a 24 inch strip that's uh about three inches wide, so we can make these parts uh, in the CNC. And so we will go and do first stop and kind of kind of work from there to be able to break down that that uh, material, take off the excess material we don't need. It's just a lot quicker to be able to do it that way uh, than it did on the water jet, and uh, much more cost effect effective without having to uh, to uh, use the garnet and stuff like that. Um, so. Uh, what CAD program do we use? We use uh, CAD CAM. Uh, the parts are designed in SOLIDWORKS and the CAM software, it, we use uh, Gibbs CAM. So that, that's what we use, use here in our shop. Um, I have also used Fusion. Uh, when I took that SVMI course, I used Fusion and I thought that was a really neat program as well. Really uh, easy to use um, and kind of, um, yeah, just really easy to get used to and, and run through with the CAD CAM, being able to see a uh, swap uh, to the CAD and the CAM, being able to kind of kind of see both sides of that. It's really cool, really cool program. Um, also pictured what I have down here are some of the parts that we make uh, uh, in-house. So this is a lot of what we make here. So we use a lot of different materials. Uh, so this here is PVC. Uh, this is some, some steel here, uh, aluminum. Uh, these are all, most of these parts are for our physical destroyers because those are, uh, really made out of a lot, lot of steel and aluminum just to be able to make them nice and rigid. Um, we actually made this, uh, this uh, cutout of the United States. We made this on our water jet. This is actually an overlay. So we did uh, two pieces of aluminum here that we, uh, that we polished out by hand and had one powder coated. See, it's just fun to be able to use the equipment you have to make 
uh, different projects and kind of go along with that. So, yeah. Um, so what impact does manufacturing have on the Sacramento region? And how are we making products that change lives, improve the world? It's incredibly satisfying to know that something that we contributed to has such a positive impact. For instance, medical devices that save lives of patients, agriculture equipment to grow processed food more substantially, components to make planes, trains, and cars, and drones for space, uh, for space exploration. It, it's really cool to be able to see how everything just kind of starts small and it just builds up. Um, like our, I speak from experience for RD Gaussian equipment. Um, we're a small company here in Roseville with about just under 30 employees. And we make equipment that is on Navy aircraft carriers. And that's a huge deal because we have to use our NSA top secret um, compliance uh, to, be, to be able to be able to get on those aircraft carriers and kind of go, go along with that. It's, it's just really cool to be able to do that. Um, uh, and so opportunities. So how did I start in this and how did I end up here? Uh, where did you start and what did you do? And what are my future career steps? So, as you know, I started w working here, just sweep, sweeping the floors and, and on our production line, just kind of helping out where I could after hours after my school. Um, uh, what did I start and what did I do? It's kind of the same thing. And what are my future career steps? So, I'm having a lot of fun doing, being able to kind of be a jack of all trades, as, as you, you can say. And so, being in sales, it's really cool to be able to see how where our products being uh, being applied, how it's being used. Um, it's fun being able to go across the street, back over into the machine shop, kind of help them over there if they need it. Kind of um, just kind of kind of be able to know everything. Um, so my future career steps. Um, really, I'm I, I'd like to get involved a lot more in machining. I would like to learn the um, can, uh, CAD side of things a little bit better. I'm not too great with the programming. Um, I haven't really done too much of it unless it's on the water jet or really anything like that. Um, so I really would like to learn really how to make some more complex parts and be able to build on that. So, yeah. Uh, requirements for opportunities, manufacturing companies uh, with people of every level of education. This is true. Um, I've hired friends who um, have no clue what, what machining are. Um, they have joined me uh, over in the machine shop. They start as deburrs and they kind of kind of just transpires from there. So, so it goes goes really well. Um, high school graduates may, may learn on the job. This is true. We have had um, some uh, some young students in here who just before going into college, uh, they they were working with us for the summer. It's been really cool to be able to see how they have been able to learn, have fun here, and then uh, they were able to go off and um, do what they were doing there in school. Uh, community college students with certificates in machining, welding, mechatronics, CAD, and electronics are in big demand and earn excellent salaries. This is true. Um, uh, if you can um, really do any of these skills, you are needed in the world. Um, whether you want to be able to be able to travel and be a welder, you can be a pipeline welder. Um, I have friends who do that all over the country, and they make some really good some really good money doing that. And it's just really cool to be able to see where they're going with their with their welding rigs and just be able to kind of drive around and uh, go to these different places. Uh, it's really cool. Um, engineers and ma managers require university degrees. Often there are summer internships or part-time work while going to school. Uh, so you can have the experience and uh, experience the work and help pay for. This is true. So I have taken a lot of uh, uh, these, these courses that are a uh, week, couple week long to be able to go get these, um, get these cert uh, certificates um, and uh, to be able to show that I have learned these skills, part of it's for being a manager, whether it's manager in, uh, becoming a manager or um, uh, for really, re you can do it, really do it for anything. Um, and it's just really cool to be able to see that there's courses available that you can build on to be able to build and go with your career path or just what you're interested in in general. And that's how you can make sure you're having fun here uh, at work and outside of work. Uh, the creativity part, uh, creative problem solvers who can find better ways to make things. Uh, materials reduce environmental impact. Uh, this is very true. Cut costs and take take what a customer is trying to accomplish and find an answer. Very true. Like I said, with going from the water jet to the CNC machine, uh, 
basically by saving all that time and money, we're able to cut costs, speed things up and have uh, more product and be able to produce more product. It's, it's really rewarding to be able to go and do that work with every work with the engineers and the, uh, and the machinists to be able to do stuff like that. So it's, it's really, really cool. Um, oh, one of the questions were, uh, do our products also destroy solid state drives? They do. Um, and so back on that slide where it was our physical destroyer, um, that silver attachment that was above it, that is uh, actually what destroys solid state drives. Uh, there's 90 spikes that come from the top and the bottom, and it actually penetrates the solid state drives. And uh, um, so basically when the spikes go through, it breaks all the chips and kind of does a waffling effect on the, on the board. So it's really, really cool. Um, so wanted to say thank you um, for listening to my presentation. Um, uh, SVMI really appreciate you guys all coming out today. And now I have about 15 or so minutes. I'm not sure on the time right now, but 15 minutes uh, for some questions and answers, if, or for some questions, if you guys have any. Um, did I answer all the questions here that were shown up over here? Justin, I'll ask you a question. Yeah. Hey, when you were at Sierra College, did you uh, did you participate or focus on any like pathway or program there, or was it sort of just a general ed thing? So when I was going to Sierra College at the time, I was still mostly interested in in vehicles. While well, I was also working at actually when I was going to Sierra College, they did not have. I tried signing up for the CAD courses, and uh, they were full at the time. And so that's then I was actually focusing on like auto shop and stuff like that. Um, I was going to take a welding course, but I, um, I, for some reason, I just, I just didn't. But um, they really weren't uh, the machining programs that are there now. They were not available when I was going to school there. Um, right when I uh, was leaving, that's when they got their first water jet and they started offering a water jet course and stuff like that. But it, it was mostly for general ed when I was going there. Nice. Uh, I got a question from one of my students. Yeah, <laughs> he's curious if you have any other off-roading cars besides your Toyota. <laughs> yeah, um, I have a second Toyota actually. So I have a, uh, it's more more of a buggy. So it's a, uh, basically it's a Toyota pickup that has the front and the rear chopped off of it. And it's all tube work with all the tube work wrapped around it. So um, with all the tubing that's been uh, basically bent, I had a, have a friend who, um, builds race cars basically for, for off-roading, professional uh, off-road cars. And he built, it's called an exo cage. So it's basically all these tubes that are wrapped around the car, kind of like a jungle gym. And uh, and yeah, so you can roll it over, flip it over and it will still start up and be able to drive away. So yeah, I don't think I have any pictures of them, but yeah, so yeah. All we'll right. see you, guy. yeah. I have a question from one of my students. Okay. Uh, they're interested to know uh, when you were younger, as, what kind of hobbies did you have as a kid? What what kind of led you down this path? So when I was a kid growing up, I was really into um, mount, mountain bikes. So that was actually my passion before cars. And so I loved working uh, with all my bikes, um, really just kind of seeing what, what I could do, building the building jumps for them and stuff like that. Um, so basically it led me down the line of being able to uh, build my uh, build my bicycle to be able to do what I wanted it to do with whether it was put bigger suspension on it so I could go up to the mountain and go and go downhilling at North Star, uh, kind of things like that. Um, yeah, so so that's that's really what's what's what started me, and so I was able I always like building things. I've always liked building things, and so from the mountain bikes, then I got into the off roading world, and um, that was about when I was 16. Uh, I really got into vehicles heavily, and that I always wanted to modify everything that I had. Always had to, always had to change it up, and so that is kind of what really led me down this road. So now I can actually build the cars and really make them do what I want by doing it all myself. And so it's um, kind of, that's kind of been my, my progression there. You still mountain bike? I do not as much any as, as would like to anymore. Um, 
starting to get back into it actually. But yeah, I, I used to be the guy that would go up to Auburn or North Star every weekend and, and go downhill and broke my scapula, did some fun things on that. But yeah, then I kind of dialed it back after that. <laughs> FYI, there's a lot of great new trails that have been built over the last couple of years. That are oh, better, yeah. Like North Star and only a hop, skip, and jumping away. So. Oh, very nice. Yeah, I used to go up there almost every weekend when I was in high school and uh, and go, going to school still. Yeah, I, I, I love that. Cool. Yeah, so um, to kind of show you that solid state drive, or that solid state destroyer. I can go back here and show you that picture of this too. So this right here, um, is it showing up on the screen? Yeah, so this right here, this is the attachment that you put inside of the, of the PD-5, the destroyer, and you put your solid state drive in the opening here, and there's spikes that are actually, uh, kind of like spikes on the bottom of a track shoe um, that are kind of recessed in here. You can kind of see them poking through a little bit. And so that's actually um, wh where they are. And so these springs, once you once it starts compressing, then this top plate, then this uh, this top plate will actually accept this bottom plate that pushes up into it, and that's what exposes the spikes. And it does that on the top and the bottom of uh, top and the bottom here of the of the device. And so that's where, where the spikes can penetrate all the way through the the media that's inside of there. Uh, I got a, one more student question here. Um, do you by chance know, and you may or may not know this, but what is, I guess, your average machinist salary over at your place? I don't know that off the top of my head, unfortunately. Um, okay. I know that really it, it's all about ex, uh, experience. So if, if you come in with, with no experience, um, it's still good pay. Uh, you can come in as a, as a deburr and kind of as a par parts loader type of deal so that you can get you, um, uh, kind of uh, uh, into the into the zone as, as if uh, or if you will um, so you to kind of get you with your building blocks and so you can kind of come in with no you can come into the shop with no experience like I've had a, a couple friends do actually in, in our shop uh, so they've come in with no experience um, not knowing even really what a CNC machine is and they come in there just like oh this is cool and um, and so they can they come in without that any of that experience and so we want to see you grow and so we want to see you be able to be a just just a parts loader or someone that's deburring and we want to see you become an operator learn how to run the machines um, and and kind of go from there um, I know that uh, our pay is really around fifteen to seventeen dollars um, I, I believe starting uh, starting out depending on the experience so really you you can grow from there um, yeah thank you yeah no worries. All right, so if there's no more questions, um, then we can go ahead and uh, um, I'll go, go ahead and close the presentation here. I just want to thank you all for coming out. Oh, was there one more question? I saw someone pop up, I think. I, I have a question. Yeah. Did you? Oh, you, you, you can, can go you ahead. Me? Yeah. Yep. I can hear you. Go ahead. Sorry. I was waiting for you there. So the mute come on and off. Okay. <laughs> no um, worries. What was the uh, career? Well, the, 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 sorry, it, it cut out. What was the career path? Is that what you were going to say? Yeah. What was the career path you took? So I was going to school for, uh, for, for business. And so I still, still am. Um, and so I kind of what made made my uh, career path kind of go towards what I what I'm interested was interested in, and so like I said, I was taking activities for uh, or taking courses on like auto chop because I thought 
that's what I was interested in at the time. Um, so I started out going to school for business um, because uh, that's kind of what I wanted to do with, with the vehicles. I want to be able to offer a business uh, or start a business based around these, these vehicles, something along, along those lines. And then I kind of slowed down a little bit and was able to um, uh, kind of start working here. I, I had a, was having a lot of fun with what I was doing. Um, I was learning accounting. I was learning everything that I was learning in, in school for, for the businesses. Um, I was able to learn that here while I was kind of being able to build my my own personal real life experience as well while I'm taking these accounting classes as well at school because I was taking those business courses. And so um, went along the, down the line to be able to get the uh, deg degree there in, in school. So for, for business. For the for my for my end goal there, um, so it's not my, I'm not personally around the, the machining um, uh, uh, career path there, but I uh, I have just been around the machining world here for the experience. Yeah. I think I got another question for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you uh, talked a lot about your you talked a lot about your water jet. Mm -hmm. um, that's uh you know not very common uh, okay how do you find people to operate the water jet is there a, a local certification <laughs> process or do you just so, train on site so that is a good question that the water jet has actually been um i i like i said I, i've been on the i've operated the water jet for a long time now um it's honestly it, it's a really good start um because because it's a 2d instead of 3d because you're, you're not dealing with um, different contours and stuff like that. It's really cutting out 2D parts. Um, I think the wattage is a really good learning uh, first step to be able to learn this programming, to be able to, to program and then run the machine to be able to run what you've made. Um, locally, I'm not too familiar with it. We actually just hired on some new people in our uh, machine shop, and they actually yesterday just took a kind of a webinar course from Flow, who manufactures our water jet, from them uh, about the water jet, so they could go over, see their maintenance routine, um, kind of learn learn the programming side of it, kind of ins and outs of the machine. Um, so the the manufacturers of the equipment, they want to teach you how to run their run their equipment, so they're very willing to um, be able to learn and or learn to be able to host these events and teach you how to how to use it properly so um yeah so specifically specifically for the water jet it's a uh, um yeah been been pretty fun and yeah i do think i have a video of the water jet but i won't the video hasn't really been working so i won't show that Well, perfect. If there's no more no more questions, um, again, thank you all for uh, viewing my presentation, and uh, hope you all have a good day. Thanks, Justin. Thank you. Are you still there? I'm here. I, I have a student that uh, oh. that ha I have one more question for you. No, 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 uh, no worries. I I can hang out. Okay. Their question was, what what exactly is your job? So now I'm in sales. Um, so right now I'm in sales. Um, I'm an account manager here at Garner. Um, I have uh, accounts um, or uh, clients who and clients and dealers and distributors who are both in the U.S. and outside. So I I deal with people who sell our equipment in Singapore, uh, in Japan, in Europe, uh, India. So all all over. Um, it's and it's really cool. So I, I'm in sales now with everything that I've learned from starting out um, on our production line. And it's it's been really cool to be able to tell people, my uh, our dealers and our customers, kind of my story. And they think it's really intriguing. And it's it's really cool to be able to see how one can grow inside of a, a company that offers all these these, uh, these these opportunities. So yeah, and I, I still do purchasing and um, sometimes help out over the machine shop run run the machines and um and uh and kind of go along 
with that. So it, it's it's really cool to be able to kind of bounce back and have the opportunity to go over there and kind of help out and and do things like that. So yeah. Yeah, the, the main thing is here, it, it's really about teamwork, being able to help out, uh, help out the other departments. And um, by being in sales, you can go over and say, hey, um, uh, it's it's just just really cool to be able to go over there and say, say, hey, um, I, I need help with um, this, this customer needs a, a case that will fit um, X, Y and Z units that we have. Um, what can we do about making one of those? And so it's cool because we have our own machine shop that's in-house and now our own uh, CNC router, which can make our own foam and make our own cases. And so I can say, hey, um, what can we do about making this one-off case for this customer? Um, uh, is, is that a possibility? And then work with the engineering department um, and then kind of follow that through to the machine shop. And then next thing you know, uh, you, you have your own one-off part for the customer and they're super stoked and they're able to kind of um, go along with that, put out that good word that um, that the company works with the customer to try to get them what they need. Um, just like the, the carts I showed in the picture, um, everything there was, um, everything, uh, th this cart right here, this was a custom design cart for a customer in, in a data center. Um, they they worked with us for about a month while we were able to kind of configure a car cart that would fit their doorways and stuff like that. It's it's just really cool to be able to see how working with them, you can, uh, you, you can create this. It's just really neat. Thank you very much. Hope you all have a good day.